format, didn't he? Change the team. Absolutely fantastic. Santa might be a Borough fan, but he didn't bring as much luck at Burnley, did he? Ho, 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 Merry Christmas. But not too much ho, ho, ho. In the studio, it's the Lone Brothers. On the wing, far side, Liam, Daniel with him as well. Fellas, thank you for coming into the studio. Thank you, Dave. I know it's rude to eat with your mouth full, but I'll get through it. Um, let's start with Burnley. Out in the wing, then. Um, how painful was it for you, Liam? Painful, yes, but we should be winning these games. And to be honest, I thought we played pretty well mm. in the second half. And the first 10, 15 minutes of the first half. But I just... We should be winning these games. Yeah. To see the great goal go in, uh, goal go in, Daniel. How um, how much did it hurt? Uh, very bad. Uh, of, of a keeper of Alder's quality, he should have been stopping that. But it's football. Mistakes are going to happen. He's not done too badly for us over the past few handful of games, though. He's, since the Arsenal game, he's he's been phenomenal. Yeah. So would you, would you really want to point the finger at Valdez and say you know it's it, it's his fault? No, not really, but if Vony, it came up from him. Mm. Like he had it stopped until he, he knocked out to the side of it. Yeah, until it, it bubbled over. Leo, I mean, we could argue Valdez should have held it, but we yeah. could also argue that Fabio shouldn't have given the free kick away a little bit early. That led to the long ball over, yeah. etc. Where do you where where do you point the finger of blame? Uh, it's difficult, Dave. I just. I don't think you should have conceded a free kick in that position. Mm. It was just an easy dead ball situ situation. And yes, Valdez should have kept hold of it, but he's a, a quality of a keeper, he is. Mm. All for trophies he's won. Was, you, you can't blame just one person. You have to blame for your team. I agree with you, and being a former Borough keeper, uh, yeah. Borough keeper, I wish I was a Borough keeper, I was a Borough junior keeper, yeah. uh, being a former keeper, of course. I am a member of the goalkeepers fraternity, so you can't blame a goalkeeper. Good. Uh, how damaging was it though? Because you look at the league table now and you see Burnley sitting above us. We we could have been, you know, a chunk of points further away. Four from the drop zone. We could have been seven from the drop zone if we'd have won that one. How damaging was that? Was that defeat? To be honest, you can't really tell until Liverpool the last game of the season. You just can't. But we've got a four point scrap from Sunderland. In my opinion, it's out of a from 18th to. 12th, 11th mm. to get that less relegation players because I think others once you're going down. Yeah. Do you get a feeling in your water at all that it might be damaging that, that Burnley result or, no, or not? No, we always knew it was going to be difficult going to Turf Moor because we won 16 points out of the last 20 or something. Yeah. There. So we know it was going to be difficult. Didn't expect to lose. Maybe we should have drawn the game. Mm. But I, I think we're still up. I'd have been quite happy with the last minute 1-1. One, one. Get in. Right, last season's wrong, but it wasn't to be. Uh, substitutions. Uh, Ito's decision to bring on subs with four and three minutes to you know, four, three minutes to go, that sort of thing. Uh, getting a bit of a panning from fans. Where do you stand on these very late changes? Uh, to be honest, at Burnley, I didn't think we needed to make a change at all. You didn't think so? No, I thought the side he put out was good. They were attacking, just weren't getting the goals gone. The only one substitution I well made was bring Jordan Moore on, give Negredo someone to work with yeah, up front. You're asking for two strikers, yeah. yeah. It's like asking for that pig to fly past the window, isn't it? It's not going to happen, <laughs> yeah. we know. Liam, where do you stand on the subs and the changes? I agree with Daniel. On um, Monday, Bernie, I just, we were nil nil. I thought we would play for a draw from the start. We didn't need to, but some of the subs we make are stupid ones. Like Liverpool, when we won nil down, we've got two strikers on the bench. We bring two defensive midfielders on. Mm. And um, Southampton, Traore, bring him on 10 minutes to go. It takes him 10 minutes to get started. What, should, what do you think? Well, I mean, if you were I so, it's the big question, isn't it? And that's what a lot of fans are saying. Yeah. What do we know? You know, he's the boss. He's the man in charge. He knows the players. But if you were I so, what would you have, what would you have, you have done change-wise? Would you have not bothered all the way through? No. If I, to, if I was I so, I would have brought Traore on, like, five minutes before, like, air scored. Mm the 70th minute, see how would he do. But when we go 1-0 down, I always bring two up front. Yeah. I would have I would have brought words on two up front. It's that famous yeah. chant from last week, uh, from last season. We'd like two strikers, please. Um, 
You've had your say, of course. Uh, interesting. Uh, let's have a look at some of the tweets that have been coming in. Uh, we'll uh, kick them off with uh, match reaction. Uh, the first one is from Paul. Uh, he says, just back from the Burnley match, disappointing result, but we were the better team. Uh, but we have to start taking our chances in those tight games. I'd just like to point out before we move on with the tweets, have a look at this. We've gone a close-up on Paul's photo. Nice white hat, Paul. Lovely stuff, fella. Uh, all about Borough. We were pretty decent second half until the Val Valdez blunder. Also, I did not changing it until 85 minutes. Definitely didn't help. Uh, Ito himself. Oh, sorry, on the back of that, Colin, uh, Colin Smalley. Uh, his use of subs is an issue he needs to sort out. We can see a theme developing here. Ito, the man himself, uh, has been tweeting. It was frustrating uh, because we think we were better than Burnley today. We had chances to score, but must now learn from this and keep going. Uh, on the subject of him learning, Gibson is King tweeted, uh, hopefully that defeat will finally teach AK the lesson he keeps harping on about learning. Um, Andy, uh, no it isn't, it's Josh, uh, UT Borough. Uh, we play counter-attacking football away from home and he doesn't play our only fast player, it beggars belief. And uh, Andrew Roberts, no relation whatsoever, uh, they were there for the taking. So it's interesting, the fans themselves are starting to become a little bit vocal but a, a, a lot resting on that substitution and, and not yeah. making effective changes. Like we saw Dice did, the ginger nut himself decided, yeah. needed to make a change, weren't breaking Borough down, and he made a change. Yes. You'd like to see that with Ito? Uh, yes, if it's like a dead game like it was on Monday, maybe. Hmm. Bring, like Troy Owen, bring a bit of pace on. Bring, like, replacing the grade or bring Wards on. Like you say, like we saw last season. Love scoring against them. Yeah. Well, it did finish. It, sorry, mate. Uh, it did finish one nil. Uh, let's get Joe Nicholson's take on the match. So it was a disappointing Boxing Day for Borough, who went down one nil away at Burnley, thanks to Andre Gray's goal ten minutes from time. It came when the Burnley goalkeeper Tom Heaton kicked a long ball upfield, and it was flicked on by Sam Vokes. Gray volleyed it home. The ball wriggled under the Middlesbrough goalkeeper Victor Valdez, who did make. A rare error but I don't think you can heap all the blame on him he's made a couple of really good saves in recent weeks and won us a lot of points improved considerably since the start of the season but it was quite a disjointed gritty game not a lot of quality a lot of tackles a lot of bookings overall and it was a fine margin in the end that won the game Gray's goal in the 80th minute but it leaves Borough 15th in the table probably where a lot of us expected them to be at the start of the season. They're still four points clear of the relegation zone going into the game against Man United at Old Trafford on New Year's Eve. Thanks for that, Joe. Uh, we touched on it just before Joe's match report there, fellas. There seems to be a polarisation of fans. It's There doesn't seem to be an awful lot in the middle now. It's either uh, Eidol's the best thing since sliced bread <laughs> or he certainly isn't the best yeah. thing since mouldy bread. Um, just having a look at some more tweets that have been coming in to give you an idea. Thousands of them all over social media, just a representation here. Uh, David, uh, I used to be a huge AK fan, but when you see the same problems from when he took over, something is wrong, not as good as people think he is. David Gibb on the back of that said, remind me where we were when he took over and the average crowd. So you can see what's happening. Somebody will come up and criticise and then somebody will straight on the back on in the defence or vice versa. Um, Keith, the worst thing about Borough losing is having to see those stupid tweets by fans who don't have a clue. Paul Jenkinson on straight on the back of that. It's because people care my mum could do better than that. Again, praise, then straight fire criticism. Uh, Mark Schallager should have had subs on earlier. Cranker has no idea. The Borough blogger did the same. Cranker needs to see uh, we're poor going forward Stuart, with Stuani on the right. It worked in the Championship, but it won't work in the Prem. And then Craig straight on. Uh, mate, I don't enjoy football sometimes, but he'll keep us up. And kick on with better players going forward with him. Hutchie, totally agree. Um, it is a polarisation. Yeah. Is that a bit dangerous for us supporters to to see two camps developing here? I don't know. It's a. I think it's a good thing because to have uh, different opinions because now everyone's going opinions to agree. Opinions are great. They're yeah. fantastic, aren't they? Um, but when you have fans divided over the manager, something's not right. Mm. Yes, he's not making the right subs at the right times. But he's brought us up, he's made us a whole times better than Mowbray did. Mm. And that's what fans need to see. That he's invested wisely in the Premier League, 
we brought some great players in. And he's going to take his time to find out which is his best team in Premier League. So you're still very much in the Eintor yeah. camp. You know, he's got us where we are today. Let's let's give him yeah. more time and see how he does. Where, where, where's your thoughts on this? I don't see the other side what's moaning about getting him sacked. When, you sat, when we got him three years ago, we were pretty much in a relegation show in the championship, getting 12,000, 13,000 people in. And in the three years, he's got us to the playoff final, promotion, Cup ones, Premier League. It's always going to be hard this season. Mm. We weren't going to win for the Premier League like Leicester did last season. I suppose maybe another half dozen games or so. Let's see how the results go. And that will dictate, you know, nobody else can dictate, it'll be the results that dictate yeah. how this swing between the fans uh, the fans go. OK, interesting one, that one. Um, in, another interesting one is what we've been doing since we came on air. What was it, back in April uh, 2016? It's the end of the year, so we thought we'd dip in to do a bit of a season review and see who we chatted with. Here's part one of 2016. This is pre-promotion. At the time, I was just pleased that we'd scored and we were winning 1-0. Um, I didn't think anything of the relevance of, of what I'd done. Uh, and it was only half-time, I've said this before, where Robbie Musto had turned to me and he went, you lucky so-and-so. Um, I said, what do you mean? He said, well, it's the first goal, isn't it? That's the first goal. And, and ever since then, you know, it's, it's the one thing that people mention every time they see me or if I get fan letters or, you know, it's always mentioned somewhere along the way. So whilst at the time I didn't think anything of it, as time's gone on and I moved away from the club and, and Borough fans have been in touch, it's, it's the one thing that everyone mentions. And, and now when I think about it, I'm, I'm really proud to, to have done it. And it's, you know, it's something that I'll never forget. And it's in the record books forever. We had to win the last game of the season to, uh, to go up. And um, thinking back now, if the scenes that happened in 66 happen at the, river, at the Riverside next week, you know, it'll be absolutely tremendous because in all my career, I never saw anything like that, those scenes that, that night. I, I'd played at Ayrson Park in front of 50,000 when we played Newcastle and, and Sunderland and things like that. But, you know, t that night, reputedly, there was 40,000 there, but, you know, there was sat around the running track. There must have been 50 to 60,000 there, you know, at the end of the night. What a great time to be back in the Barclays Premier League. And for me, I get to talk about Middlesbrough next season here on TV, on NBC. I'm an analyst. We cover the Premier League here in the United States and I am going to say so many good things about Middlesbrough Football Club. I can't wait. Congratulations again and what a good job well done. I've got to be very quiet because just over there there's a man who supports Man United. That side Man City and Air indoors is a Liverpool supporter. My son's in there as well who supports Everton. So from the heart, I'm really pleased that you're coming up. Welcome to the Premiership. And good luck to you all next season. Bye for now. See you soon. We'll be the bro. We'll be the bro. Everywhere we go, everyone will know. We'll be the bro. We'll be the bro. We'll be the bro. Everywhere we go, everyone will know. We'll be the bro. But it's been a great season. I wouldn't say the most entertaining season. You know, at times uh, it's been, well, I'd use the word boring at certain times, but, um, but the objective was to get promotion and, and, and fair play to Ito Karanka. I admire his stubbornness. You know, people have said, oh, we don't play good football. Uh, at home, we, we're not as entertaining as we should be, but he's got there doing it his way. Uh, and I admire that, that stubbornness. You know, he could have bowed to the chairman, the fans, whoever, whoever's having a say, but he's stuck to his principles and he's got his rewards, so well done him. So some memories and thoughts there of uh, building up to the promotion game, that Brighton game at the end of the season and obviously the celebrations after. Uh, great time to be a Borough fan. Yep. Uh, what do you remember of it, Liam? Up and down season, to be honest, Dave. Uh, first half season, played all right. Probably the best thing, we should have been in the league about nine, ten points. I mean, and then after Christmas, like always, messing up, like poor performances, Karanka walking out, mm. Karanka coming back and just coming to the last game of the season against Brighton. Apologies for eating, but I do love Christmas pudding. Um, <laughs> and yourself, Daniel, what, what are your memories of that Fat promotion Brighton, season? Fat Brighton game before Christmas, when the, we ended the undefeated one, mm -hmm. beating one of the best teams in the league. 
you just knew it was going to be our year. And then after Cranker walked out, we needed so many points. We went to Bolton, two last minute goals by Jordan Rhodes. And it just set up for the last turn perfectly. Mm. And then scenes at the end on the pitch. Well, I was just, just before the end. Back. I mean, it was 1 1, and they were really bright and were really having a go at us, weren't they? That point. Yeah. How nervous were you that we might just leak one? Uh, I couldn't watch the last seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> but to be honest, what changed the game was that Stevens red card. Yeah. I've always said if Stevens never got sent off, we probably would have lost that game. And yourself? How, yeah. how were you before the whistle went? Uh, I was nervous. Yeah. I, cu- I couldn't watch for the last couple of minutes. And then once it had gone? Oh, overjoyed. Yeah. Absolutely buzzing. Huge motion swing, wasn't it? It was nails bitten completely down and then celebration time. So at 2016, we'll have a look at, um, if you like, what we've been doing on redarmy.tv after uh, promotion. We'll do that a little bit later. But it's high time we caught up with the latest goings on with the Red Army News. Here's Chris' story. We start this week with the madness that is the transfer merry-go-round. And like the summer, Borough are being reported to be ready for Sunday's opening of the transfer window. Now reports suggest Borough will be snapping up Aston Villa's £6.5 million man Rudy Gestead. Now the Frenchman is a striker which has led to other reports suggesting Rhodes will be off to Leeds or Sheffield Wednesday and Nugent will join Curtis Fleming at QPR. Elsewhere, Borough's again been linked with Hull Central defender Harry Maguire, leading to suggestions that Ayala and Espinosa will be on their way too. Now, one thing for certain is that Borough's defender Antonio Barragan will be missing from the lineup at Old Trafford on Saturday. The fullback picked up his fifth yellow card of the season at Burnley on Boxing Day, which means he has to sit out the Man United clash. Former Borough midfielder Paul Gascoigne is described as being in a stable condition in hospital after being reported as getting injured in a fight. Gaza's spokesman was quick to confirm the ex England star had not been arrested after police were called to an East London hotel. Gaza signed for Borough in 1998 for almost £3.5 million. And finally, RedArmy.tv would like to wish all Borough fans a very happy and successful new year. And we raise a bottle to take in 22 points between now and the summer. We'd love to hear your Borough New Year's resolutions, so get them in. Email us studio at RedArmy.tv or social media at Borough Red Army. The more Borough, the better. Thanks for that, Chris. As we mentioned earlier, just before the news, uh, there's a two-parter to 2016. We are at the end. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas. Happy New Year and all that. Um, So we've dipped into what we got up to on redarmy.tv before promotion. So what about the first half of the Premier League season? Here's a look back at what we've done so far. The whole gig came about because of my suspension. And at the time, there was two lads in particular, Tommy McGinn and a lad called Spanky. And uh, I knew them really well. Good lads, just ordinary lads from the street. They weren't, you know, from the football world or anything. And uh, I said I would join them in the Hallgate. And I think they were a bit, yeah, no chance, Hodge, you wouldn't come. And I did. And I actually was the only person to stand in the Hallgate end and sing a Sunderland song and not get clipped for it, <laughs> which I did, <laughs> just for the fun of it, you know. But it was great. It was, listen, I'm an ordinary kid. I come from Gateshead. I've been a football fan all my life. Uh, I come from the street t- t- this year. So being in there wasn't anything like, different to me but maybe from a football side why would a player go and stand in the terrace as well for me it was just normal practice you know the the Basel game I said afterwards phenomenal what are we at? and I said to the staff and everybody in the club enjoy this night because nights like this only come across once or twice in your career comebacks like that fairy tale three weeks later <laughs> it happened again I said, there you go, lightning doesn't strike twice, but it does at the Borough. And um, phenomenal, unbelievable. Uh, But that was purely because, you know, the backing that we had from Steve to get the players that enabled us. We could go and play Yakubu on the left, we could have Asselbank and Paducah up front, Mendieta on the right, and whoever, whoever behind. You know, it was, it was strong. It could score goals and it, it was a cup team. But we finished with a 15 point gap between ourselves and Luton that mm. year. When you bear in mind it was only two points for a win. You were almost the Invincibles, weren't you? I mean, how good a team was it? Well, it was, like you say, it was a team. But Jack always said to me, he said, yeah, you can get four, but your main thing is be steady at the back. You know what I mean? If we don't concede any goals, we're halfway there. And uh, that's, that's what happened. But, you know, 
you've got to pick your time to go. You just don't run willy nilly. You know, it's, it's just you get into a, a phase of sort of seeing where the ball's going to come and you just go for it. And did he have this knack of reminding you if you did oh, get stranded God, up yeah. front? Oh, God, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jim, what do you remember of that, that era? Uh, we lost our first home match, you know. Mm, that's right, yeah. And up until then, Jack was nice and we'd played a few friendlies in Scotland. Can't remember who we played against. We won them. We did well. We went to Portsmouth, who who had bought mm. big that season, and we beat them one 0 I think we were a bit lucky, but we won one 0 And then we played Fulham at home, and Fulham beat us two 0 mm. And Jack went mad mm. twice. Mm. He went mad but and he walked out yeah. uh, after the match. And then we met up again at Essen Park on the Monday, and in the middle of the pitch, and he was talking to us, and he said, "I'm sorry, I lost my temper." But he got talking again and lost it again and walked off. And he said, you either do it my way <laughs> yeah. or not at all. So that brings us to the present day then. Not small matter of Manchester United at Old Trafford, fellas. And not just the small matter of Manchester United at Old Trafford, but it's a Manchester United side that have just gone on a five-match winning run. Uh, what are your thoughts, Liam, on, on what we've got to do? Well, it's one person we have to keep quiet on uh, Saturday. Slatten, the tall fella. Yeah, who loves, who's been scoring goals for fun, setting up people, but it's one person who knows Marino better. Saito. That's good. That's an interesting point. Do you think I tour will have the inside track on Jose? I don't know. Jose has changed these words a lot since the time at Real Madrid. Um, it's not about the manager. It's the players on the pitch. If I can outskill our players and quality of them players compared to ours. Well, it's a bit chalk and shit. I mean, let's take our hearts to one side because we know Borough's the best team in the world. But it is a bit chalk and cheese, isn't it? I mean, we're up against a United side who just merrily throw money at Pogba and Zlatan comes in on humongous salaries. How much better are they taking the bread and white heart out and just trying Some, to look at it from a head from perspective? Last season, they're loads better under mm. Lou Van Gaal. They didn't look like for Manchester United of old. Under Mourinho, they look like they could win the league. Can we beat them? I would like to say yes, but I don't think we can. I was going to say, my next question was, do you expect us to beat them? No. You think it'll be a defeat? Yeah. I'd I, I, I be happy with a draw. You'd be happy with... I'd be bloody happy with a draw as well. Uh, Liam, what's your thoughts on it? Can we beat them? Well... We see all against all the big teams this season, except apart from Liverpool, like Man City, Arsenal, where they played fairly well. Scored a late goal against Man City. I can't see us why we can't nick a 1 0 winner in the last minute to ruin Edward again. You think we can defend mightily against the United in attack and, and then go and, go and sneak one? We defended for 120 minutes last season against them. Well, you're not on your own, fella. You're not. Just having a look at the poll. Uh, we did ask the question a couple of days ago. Can we really get that much-needed win at Old Trafford? 52% Borough fans saying, of course, it's on. 48% yeah. obviously saying, nah, it's going well, to be well, no points. Clank, it's that still was 48%. Yeah, well, there <laughs> you go. So 52% of Borough fans on the poll. Thank you for taking part. Reckon we can. If we do it, is it really going to be a bats-to-the-wall Nick a goal on the break. Is that the only way we can beat United? Or do you see us going there and having a goal then? I, was, I could see the same tactics we did against Man City. First half, let, let, them, def, uh, let them attack us, hmm. defend, not concede the goal. And second half, give it a go. Give it a go. See if we can catch a late goal. Because defensively, not good. Yeah. They've already got to go defensively. And with Fern Rooney really injured. Well, Negredo, I mean, he's a big man for big occasions. Could he be the key? It could be, yeah. Um, he could mine out power Rohan and Smallin together, but it's going to be one of them if Bo turns up on the day. Come on then, predictions time. What's, what's the score like? You one said one. you're probably... Oh, you'd be, so the, the heart's going for 1-1, yeah. one, one, is it? What's the head going for out of interest? 1-0 one, no to Bo. <laughs> <laughs> How about yourself? What do you reckon? A 1-0. No. Borough? Borough, 1 0 Borough. I love the positivity. Absolutely fantastic, fellas. And I take my hat off to you. Well, I would, but my hair looks stupid now since I've been wearing the Santa hat. Um, I can't see us doing it. I really can't. I just think they're on fire. But I couldn't see us doing anything at City. I yeah. hoped. I couldn't see us doing anything at Arsenal. I didn't expect. So uh, I'm going to say it'll be a United victory as much as it hurts, to, to, to be brutally honest. 
But um, no, fingers crossed, hopefully it'll happen. Hopefully the magical Christmas pudding, which you've got some outside, fellas, will uh, will do its thing, and thanks to Odge for bringing it in. Um, thanks for joining us, fellas. Hope you enjoyed it. Merry Christmas again. Happy yeah. New Year. You too, and uh, we'll see you in a year's time, 2017. Yeah. Cheers. Thank you. And thanks to you too. Happy New Year. Come on, lads, believe. Come on.